Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Starfield and we're going to be doing five more ship designs. Today we're going to be doing five more for Star Wars. So we already did uh, a video where I did several different Star Wars ship designs. I did an X-Wing, I did an A-Wing in that video, did a Star Destroyer, did the Millennium Falcon, I did the Razor Crest. Oh, actually it was six and I also did Sebulba's Pod Racer. So in that video I already covered all those ones. So if you want to see any of those, uh, I have that video on the channel already and you can check it out. Today we're going to be going over some more Star Wars ships because Star Wars has a lot of ships in it and so you can see we've got one parked here already rather large but it looks pretty good and it is a y-wing bomber well i mean they've been used as ouch i hurt my limb but anyway a y-wing so let's just start it off i will not be doing like full build guides step by step but i will show you enough that if you want to try copying any of these builds you should be able to uh from what i show you in this video so uh, let's just dive on in and start off with the y-wing so i tried to make all of these into nice uh, class c ships if i could so sometimes the aesthetic of a ship makes it hard to actually go for a full-on class c but i tried to with all these star wars ones too be uh, to make the stats as good as possible and I, it turned out pretty good in the end so uh you can see our y-wing bomber here is class c we've got two full weapon batteries and you could obviously just add another gun to make the third one full uh i ended up going with uh even though this is class c you can see that our grav drive isn't all the way to the top but i think it works out really well and i think the aesthetics i kind of nailed it here i know a lot of people have tried uh y-wing designs already in this game and i've liked some of them and disliked others i personally think this one that i've come up with is the best of them all so uh as far as the design goes it's a relatively straightforward build this one's pretty easy i think to imitate as long as you've got the parts for it we have the demos 120 ld landing bay up here off the front right behind that i've got uh, a two by one hab i just have a living quarters so we have some space in here above our landing bay and living quarters we just have two more two by one living quarters so we have the uh i have another living quarters here and a captain's quarters up the front so total for habs is just three two by ones uh then off the front of uh, this hab here, we have a Cabot C4 Nova Galactic Bridge, which gives us a ton of interior space and helps with the front shape of our Y-Wing really, really well. So I love the way that turned out. Uh, but that's it for habitation space and drive and everything. You can see we have our docker right above this hab. This ship's really easy to navigate because it's not overly big. If you want to have plenty of crew in here, I just say turn all of the habs that you have on here into living quarters. Maximizes the amount of people you can bring with you places. Um, but yeah, that's it for the internal space. So it's super easy to navigate. It's one of the reasons I really like this ship. Uh, then to get the rest of the structure of the ship, starting up on the front, uh, to fill out the shape from the bridge and the hab, we have two of these stroud caps on either side. So we have a stroud cap A, uh, port aft bottom and aft top for either side. So you can see that, uh, or these ones are starboard, not port. But uh, that's where we get all of the shape for the front of our ship. Then for the neck, you can, I did it at first without these wings. I put the Demos uh, wings on the side to give it the extra shape. At first I did it without and it gave you the long, longer skinnier neck. I can see it working relatively well either way. I, in the end I just liked having these on the neck a little bit better. Reminded me more of the Clone Wars arrow Y-Wings uh, as opposed to the original trilogy. But yeah, you can do it either way and they do give you a place to mount weapons if you want. Uh, which is why I like having them there other than just general appearances. Our wings are going to be constructed. I tried making them as strategic as possible. Now mind you, you could do it, you could one-up the strategicness of these wings and uh, you could put your reactor and your grav drive out here instead of these uh, Nova bracers that I did. I've done that before with ship designs and it usually looks pretty good. Uh, the Y-Wings have a more skeletal wing design in the movies and so I went a little bit more solid than that uh, but it would look perfectly normal if you wanted to have maybe two more hab units or put all of your engines in here or whatever the case is. Instead of having your grav drive and your reactor over here, you could just have them over on the wings. But the way that I did it was right behind our hab unit and above this hab unit here, I have a class B grav drive so it's actually not a class c grav drive uh but i used a, a one that gives us 33 for grav jump thrust so it's a pretty dang good one anyway that will give you plenty of range right above that we have our shield generator i used a class c the vanguard bulwark because it looks kind of like the top of an astromech uh otherwise you could have used a class you could use the class c one that gets 1600 shield uh then our wing bracers off to the side i have uh demos hulls we're gonna be using nova galactic ng20 landing gear so we've got two down here which you can see are connected to our wings which help fill it out and obviously give us the gears that we need and we've got two more out of the wings i just use the thin versions out on the wings to keep the wings looking less bulky uh, but that's all the landing gears for the ship uh behind our central part there we have our reactor on the back i used a class c so it takes up two layers uh, but that's fine because i wanted to connect two extra engines to fill out the rest of our thrust for the ship as well as putting these bumpers on here which give us that little v shape on the back that i like so much uh each of our wings has the same layout so on the far back we have a supernova 2200 engine from relodyne then we have two of these nova galactic nova bracers 
Then we have one Stroud cowling on the, the top middle part, and then the front is made up of the Tayo cowling four top and four bottom. We have a fuel tank on either side, so we have these uh, 500T helium tanks from Ballistic Solutions. These give us 210 fuel each, so that's plenty. Then we have two cargo holds, on e uh, one on either side, so these uh, 40T hauler cargo holds from Sextant. That gives us uh, 1270 cargo each. You could do more if you wanted. You could put fuel tanks somewhere else, or you could, instead of doing these uh, Nova Bracers, you could put two cargo holds or whatever the case is. There's a lot of options with this layout uh, for you to change things, but I think it just on the whole turns out pretty good. And then I went with the white and gold accents for the color scheme. Uh, I really like it. It turned out really good. It's a fun ship to fly, and stat-wise, it is quite good. So that is my Y-Wing design. Our next one we're going to be looking at is going to be the Consular Cruiser, or Frigate, depending on how you look at it, uh, from the Clone Wars era of Star Wars. So this is not the peaceful Consular, the one that's all red that you see in the Phantom Menace get blown up at the beginning. This is the Clone Wars era that was outfitted to uh, have weapons on it and be better shielded and all that sort of stuff. I think it turned out really good. I love the way this one looks. It's one of my favorite designs from the Clone Wars, so I really like this ship. I just really like the way this one turned out. So for building this one, on the bottom, we're going to start off on the front with a Demos 120 LD landing bay. Directly behind that, a 3x1 living quarters or whatever you want to use, but a 3x1 hab is what I have this layout designed for. Above those, we're going to have the rest of our habitation units are all going to be on the front. So we have a 2x1 living quarters here and then a 2x1 workshop on the front. Directly in front of that, we have a Demos companionway. And above that, the Contiki B400 bridge from Stroud Eklund. That gives us a decent shape for the front of this ship. And that is all of the habitation space. So one 3x1 on the bottom, you got your landing bay, and then two 2x1s, a 1x1, and your brick. The rest of this is all structural and functional. So for landing gears, you can see we just have these three uh, Nova Galactic landing gears on the back. That gives us all the thrust we need uh, and keeps the lines of the ship looking pretty good. Behind that, we've got two of these uh, Sexton 40T hauler cargo holds, so plenty of cargo space. Our rear engine alignment arrangement is three of these Supernova 22 engines which gives us plenty of thrust and obviously just looks really good because it, it's how the engines look uh, on the console class in the Clone Wars. And then we have some Demos hulls to connect them. On top of those we've got the fore and aft uh, Hope Tech caps giving us the best of the or the rest of the shape on the back. Then we have our nose cap uh, from Tayo on each engine on the sides. Then our core and our, our reactor and our grav drive are centrally located. You can see we've got a sheared flow SF40 for our reactor and a J2 gamma drive for our grav drive. Our shield generator is right above the grav drive. Then we've got some uh, Demos wing D for our uh, sides to give a little bit more shape here and give us a place to mount some weapons. Uh, Demos cowling right in front of that and then just some uh, spines running down the center and another cowling for the front to give us our central neck shape basically. Then we used our Demos bumpers for the sides of the front to also help with the rest of the shape and we have these Nova cowlings on the back. Overall I really like the way this one turned out. Like I said I love the consular class. I think it looks really, really cool. Oh, and I also put some of these uh, Tayo side caps on the bottom to round it out. Uh, and if you wanted, you could obviously mount weapons down here. I mounted mine as subtly as possible to make sure it didn't ruin the outline. We've got these turrets on top, which are what the consular has in the show. So I've got uh, three of these Blaze P 20 G watt, two gigawatt SX pulse lasers. I have one here and then two on the back. So those are nice for automated firing and they look good for the design. The rest of the weapons I tried to hide as best as possible. I put two of our rail guns on the front. So right here, uh, right on the nose of the ship. So they kind of blend in relatively well there. Then we have our docker. I forgot to mention, I actually put the docker, uh, the extender port 200 docker on the bottom of the front, which is nice because it puts you right next to the cockpit, but also it, you can't see it on top. So I like that. Uh, then our other weapons are all hidden as well as I could. So you can see we've got these uh, auto hellion beams uh, and I have all of those mounted on the bottom. So I've got two mounted on the bottom of these wings and then two mounted on the bottom of the cowlings. And I put, I needed one more for the auto gauss gun. So I have it mounted it down on the side here so I, I only have that on one side. I like to keep things symmetrical but in this case it was more important to me to hide the extra weapons. So that is our counselor class. Next up, we're going to be doing the Ebon Hawk, which if you're familiar with some of the older Star Wars games like Knights of the Old Republic, you'll probably recognize this one. It is a pretty dang good ship just in general, and I really like the way I was able to get it to turn out here in the game. You can see we once again have a Class C ship with just really good stats across the board. Nothing to complain about there. Color scheme is uh, kind of tricky because depending on what picture or video you look at, it's got, you know, slightly different looking colors no matter what. So I just went with this sort of a, I don't know if you call that a mauve, but a kind of brownish pinkish color with the darker gray accents and lighter gray for the secondary color. And I think it turned out looking pretty
pretty good. As far as building this one, uh, it's a little bit more complex than other ones we've looked at uh, so far in this video, but still relatively straightforward. Have a rear-facing Demos 120LD landing bay. Directly in front of that, we've got some landing gears. So you can see my landing gear layout here is a little asymmetrical, but the ship is too, so it works that way. We've got three of these Nova Galactic landing gears. The one that I did a double is right in the middle. Then we have uh, the thin ones over on the side and one over on this side. So two on this side, one on this side. Uh, then we just have a Stroud nose cap on the front, and that gives us the front shape of our bottom layer here. Uh, the rear of it on the bottom layer, uh, next to our landing bay, we've got two of these 10T cargo holds, so they give us a little bit more cargo space. And then off the side, we've got these Stroud uh, caps on the on both sides that give us the rest of our shapes and give us a place to mount some weapons. Our engine layout on the back of this one, we've got two our four of these SAE 5660 Slayton Aerospace engines on the back. Uh, as far as the habitation layout for the ship, so you can see our landing bay is right here. Directly above that, we have a 3 by one living quarters. In front of that, we have our Viking cockpit. Above that 3 by one we have uh, a 2 by one captain's quarters, and behind that, a Stroud companionway. Uh, the companionway, I just like having it there, basically because I liked the way it looked when I built it. You don't need it structurally, so you could very easily uh, just put a lower mass structural component there if you want. Uh, but we also have habitation units out on the side, so the central located 3 by one that we have there, we then have two companionways, one on either side, and those lead us into our side hab unit. So we have uh, two more two by ones. I have a living quarters here and a science lab here, and then a living quarters here and a workshop here. So it's actually a pretty large ship. You can haul plenty of crew on this, plenty of internal space. You can have all your workshops, all that sort of stuff. Uh, as far as our functional components, we have our class C reactor off to the back here, blocked off by this companionway and the landing gear below it. And then our grab drive on the other side, same thing. It's blocked off by a hab bay and a landing unit, so you can barely even see them. Behind that on both sides, we have a fuel tank. So a 500T uh, fuel tank from Ballistic Solutions, giving this ship plenty of drum fuel. Then we have our, you can see our shield reactors on the back here. So it's pretty well hidden. Our docker is up on the front. So that's nice and close to our cockpit. So it's easy to enter and ex exit the ship. Other than that, it's all structural components. So you can see I used a lot of these Stroud caps for shapes. Our front little wing sections are the Stroud nose cap C. Then we have our Demos bumpers off to the side. And then we're just running some Demos spines down the center of these wings. I put some uh, portholes in because I like the way it looks on the ship and it makes the inside of the ship more lively since you can see out at all angles. Honestly, I really, really like it. I think this one turned out great. Uh, if you're a fan of the ship from the original game, then obviously, you know, there's a really good chance you're going to want to recreate it in Starfield. But yeah, that is the Eben Hawk. Let's move on to the next ship design. Next up, we're dealing with the Ghost from Star Wars Rebels. Not much to say about this one. It's a cargo ship that they adapted to be pretty good for a rebel use in the show. Uh, it's pretty iconic in there, so I wanted to make its stats as good as possible. So once again, we went with a top tier C-class ship. But I think I also did a good job of trying to get the appearance of it as good as possible. So for building this one, again, since it's kind of more bulky and bigger, it's a little bit more complex. The bottom of the ship doesn't have any hab units. It just has the hope for landing bay on the front. We've got our Nova cowlings to either side. We have our landing gears directly behind that. So our NG20 Nova Galactic landing gears. Then just structural components on the back for looks. So our Demos Belly aft, Nova Bracer, more Demos Belly. So that's our bottom layer. Above that, we have more hab units. So you can see that right above our landing gear, if you look behind that, we have a three by one uh, living quarters, which is how you connect your landing gear to the rest of your ship. Uh, behind those living quarters, we have another three by one unit. So basically the central part of this goes all the way to the back. And then off to the side, I have a Nova Cross Passage, which is a thinner lower mass hab unit, which leads us to our uh, uh, outside docker. So I actually have a side docker instead of a top or bottom docker on the ship. But other than that, no hab units in the middle. It's all just structural outside of that central one. Above the middle hab unit, if we move this off to the side, you can see I have a two by one up to the front which connects us to our cockpit and connects to those three by ones that are down on the uh middle level and then on the back you can see we have another two by one which this time is a workshop directly behind that we're able to fit in our uh class c reactor and in front of that our class c grab drive uh the rest of it is all just structural so like i said we just have centrally stacked hab units leading from our landing bay up to our cockpit our landing gear is off to the side so or our docking port is off to the side the rest is structural so you can see we're using these stroud caps for a lot of our structural as well as these Nova cowlings. So you can see we've got those located around. Our engine layout is uh, we have two SAE 5660 Slayton engines on either side. And then above those on the rear mounted, you know, in the back spot, spot of the ship, we have two of these White Dwarf 2330 from Relidine uh, Solutions. Then our weapons array, we've got some turrets on this one. So I've got a pulse laser turret on the back and then two on the sides. And then we've got our front facing ones. I put uh, four of these PBO 175 auto Hellion beams. And then we've got our Gauss turrets located on the bottom. So overall, very, very
very powerful ship. I love how maneuverable it is. For the color scheme on it, since the ghost, I believe, should be white, but it's super dirty in the show, so it kind of looks grayish green. I went with a grayish green color for it and gave it some yellow accents like the ghost has in the show. I think it turned out really good, and it's a pretty iconic ship that a lot of people really, really enjoy. So yeah, that's how you make the ghost. Next up, we have one of my all-time favorite Star Wars ships. This one's actually pretty simple to build. This one is the N1 Starfighter from uh, The Phantom Menace, so one of the coolest ships that the prequels ever came up with. Uh, we once again were able to make it pretty dang good stat-wise uh, while still maintaining a pretty solid appearance. Obviously, if you want to make the appearance even better, all you would be doing is removing some of these weapons that kind of ruin the layout of it, but then your ship wouldn't be nearly as well armed. Building this one is relatively straightforward and simple since it's a pretty flat ship and doesn't have a ton of internal space. We've got our landing bay on the bottom, a two-by-one workshop I have, or you could do living quarters or whatever you want right behind that. And behind that, we have our grav drive and reactor, followed up by an engine, which we used one of those SAE 5660 engines way on the back. That's all of our central stuff. Then off to the side, we've got these landing gears, which are important. We have the Hope 6 landing gears, uh, and we have two of those on either side, so that provides all of our landing gear need for the ship. Uh, directly above that, so like I said, we have our grav drive and reactor on the back. Uh, above this engine on the back, we have our fuel tank, so that all stays tucked in nice and neatly. Our side shapes are made up for these uh, Deimos bumpers on the side, and then the cowlings from Nova Galactic on the back. Uh, our companion way back here above the centrally located hab units, so we have two of these two by one hab units, then we have a companion way with a docker on top of it and our image command uh, bridge for our cockpit on the front. That's all of our internal hab space, so you can see we just have two layers of that. The bottom just has a workshop, then we have two two by ones on top, a one by one with the docker on top, and our cockpit. The front of the ship is all structural, so we have these Stroud engine bracers leading up for our wings. Off to the side, I just did the tile mid caps for the two tops and then two cargo bays for the bottom, which gives us lots of cargo space for such a small ship. Uh, and then the front, we have two Tayo cowlings. Uh, other than that, the front of our wings here, we've got three of these Deimos hulls. Off to the side, we have these Nova wings, which are both, uh, they fill out the rest of the wing look and you can mount weapons on them, which is convenient. And then off to the front, we have a Stroud nose cap with two more of those Nova wings. Then all of our weapons are located, you know, up on the front of this ship. So we've got some uh, Gauss guns off to the side located on our Nova wings. We've got our obliterator 250 auto alpha beams we have three of those and then we've got our missile launchers located on these wings so all pretty centrally located our shield generator i use the vanguard bulwark shield generator which is the best class b shield generator you can get stat wise and most importantly for the ship design it looks like the top of an astromech droid honestly i love the way this one turned out oh and i should say we have these uh supernova 2200 engines on either of these side nacelle things i love the way the n1 turned out i absolutely love flying this one around it's a lot of fun and like i said it's one of my favorite star wars ship designs from the whole franchise so that's how you make that one and that is all of our ships so that is the the five star wars ship designs i wanted to show you for this video like i said i think these ones all turned out really good it's possible that these ones turned out better than the ones from my first video i don't know you tell me but that's all for today hope you enjoyed this video but we'll see you next time thanks for watching another dare to game video if you like this video please leave a like and a comment if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like my content and would like to support this channel consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.